Hi, you too. If you like this, you should you should check me out on Twitch. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> let's go. Oh, jeez, that's loud. Concordia, ship of dreams. It's been eight years. I can still smell the. Is this Concordia or is this Titanic? Why does this look like Titanic? <laughs> Hi, Luke, and welcome in. How are you? As always, I'll try to pause whenever I have commentary. This is Concordia. Okay, it's very pretty. I've never been on a cruise ship Buffets before. From their five restaurants, <laughs> the casino and three-story theater had hardly been used. Ah, the Ooh, gym, gym, the day spa, the day the spa. The sheets in her fifteen hundred luxurious cabins hadn't even been slept in. Costa Concordia cost five hundred and seventy million dollars to build. Is that in USD or is that in like Zimbabwe dollars? Holy shit, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Bye, Luca. <laughs> Enjoy Sekiro. Holy moly. And you could cries tell. in Canadian. You could I remember it like it was just a few years ago. We had left Civitavecchia, a port in Where? Rome, and we were making our way to Civitavecchia, Rome. Okay, Savona. Savona. It was day two of our seven day journey. Okay. But that ship, I, she was cursed. Oh. When she premiered, the traditional <gasps> champagne bounced right off the side instead of smashing. A bad omen. Oh, I thought that was a person falling off. Okay, it's just a bottle of champagne. I see, I see. <laughs> when she premiered, the traditional bottle of champagne bounced right off the side oh. instead of smashing. A bad omen. Why? Act of christening involves breaking a bottle of champagne on the bowl of the ship using a carefully rigged length of line so that when it is released by the godmother, it swings across and smashes against the ship. If the bottle fails to break, it's considered bad luck. Why? Interesting. But I'm not the superstitious type. Nothing could go wrong on Friday the 13th of January, 2012. Is that when it shipped? On the 100th year anniversary of the Titanic. No on way! A ship that's what? also only safety rated for two compartment flooding. Especially not when you have a five-star max level captain like Francisco Scatino. A man who mysteriously rose from head of security to the position of captain within just a couple of years. Huh? Is that a transferable skill? Security guard to captain? Wait, is it actually on the 100th anniversary of the Titanic? Okay, I am a little superstitious sometimes, but did you know that? I think I saw this meme at the beginning of 2020 of like every, every uh, XX 20 year, so like every 100 years, there was a pandemic, and I saw this right before COVID started, and I was like, no way, there's no way, and then freaking COVID started, and I was like, what? He knows exactly what to do in case of an emergency. For example, when he caused this emergency in 2008, when he crashed into a port in Sicily. Oh. And in 2010, in Vanamon, Germany, when he was steering a different ship and came into port too fast and caused another collision. Oh. I've got Safe. a good feeling about this. Safe. So Safe. let's set the scene. It's a beautiful evening. Mm. People are having fun on the slides, mm. drinks at the bar. Mm. Antonio Magnotta is playing piano at the restaurant. Who? Cool. Martin the Magician is setting up for his show. Who? Cool. And the ship is setting up for a little detour. It's called a sail by salute. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. The locals <laughs> hate it, but the customers love it. And it's a tradition. Scatino, the captain. If I lived on the coast, I'll be so freaking pissed. Every single night, there's a ship honking at me. Comes into the dining hall. April 1912. Okay. Dominica Samorton. Remember this face, because you'll be seeing a lot of it later. Scatino eats his dinner with her and socializes for a little while. 
Then he, Dominica, and the maitre d' finish up and excuse themselves. They're heading to the bridge. It's time for that sail-by salute. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Just 1,500 feet from the island of Giglio. Okay. And how are they going to determine this distance? Well, of course, the captain is going to eyeball it. Apparently, it's not mm -hmm. uncommon to do. Scatino turns to the fella. Yeah, just like when you cook, right? Just eyeball it. Yeah, 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 it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Steering. His helmsman. Jacob Russlebin. First interesting tidbit. Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia at a rock bottom price. And he's a bit of a newbie to the job. Mm -hmm. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter and a cleaner. It's oh. his first time steering a massive ship. And okay. Mm. Very decorated past. I thought, like, for example, pilots, right? You have to do so many hours. You got to, like, get a license. You got to work your way up to a bigger, bigger plane. They just put a random fisherman or a vacuum cleaner in charge of a 570 million USC ship. That's just for planes. But why doesn't it apply to ships? And he's very excited. At least we think he is. It's hard to tell because he doesn't speak English or Italian very well at What's all. What's off to a good start. The second in command orders the helmsman to 290. Now, don't be confused by these numbers. They're just the degrees on a compass. At the same time, the captain whips out his cell phone and calls former captain Mario Palombo, who lives on the island. They chat about the safe distance to Giglio's shores. It's all very casual. Anyway, Mario says that the safe I feel like he should have made sure of this before he started sailing. From shore. The captain is going all in. This is not his first sail by salute, so he's confident in what he's doing. We're okay. going closer than we've ever been before. We're going on land, the boys. Captain's eyeballing it again. Hmm. New heading of 300, he tells the helmsman. What does that mean? Martin is about to cut his assistant in half. And of course, that means that there's already a lady inside this box. She's waiting for the cue, and then she'll poke her legs out. The captain is giving more orders. Pulling gently to 310. <laughs> Increase speed to 16 knots. This magic trick going is going to shit. It's going to be a it? fatal error. But before we talk about that, let's talk about another big problem. Uh -huh. Language barrier. Yes. Because at this point, the captain says 325. But the helmsman relays 315. Oh. So the first officer intervenes and he goes, no, 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 335. What? Which is also wrong. And then the captain clarifies, no, 325. The helmsman confirms 325. Their poor communication has them moving at a much wider angle than they think oh, they are. Oh, makes the sense. The captain should and would know this, except for the next problem, complacency about procedure. The standard procedure of a ship this large is for the third officer to give exact positional coordinates every time the captain gives a new directional order. Mm, mm, mm. But they're not doing that. 3.30, he says. The helmsman relays 3.30. The ship reaches 16 knots. The captain then turns to the second officer and instructs him to go to the left wing. That's these things here, and they basically exist so you can get a better view over the whole vessel. Okay. A few seconds pass. And then, uh -oh. the mood starts to turn. Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking oh, against the no! rocks directly in front of him in the distance. The Costa Concordia, right now, is almost 700 meters closer to the rocks than it should be. Without <sighs> this topic is very much talked about in aviation human factors. I mean, I come from a background of process safety for like chemical plants and human factors is a huge thing every time almost every time there is like an explosion or an accident or a leak that led to an explosion and you trace back what went wrong is usually a good chunk of it was ignoring procedures a good chunk of it is always like people who are on the job either ignoring procedures because they didn't understand the importance of following them or they just didn't think it was important enough to follow in the first place. Ah, this hurts! Without deviation, there is going to be a direct collision. Oh, 
Oh, shit! <laughs> immediately commands the ship to start turning away. Mm -hmm. 335. Not enough. The captain shouts, 340. The captain yells, 350. Now, remember how I said that accelerating to 16 knots was a fatal error? Well, that's because it's made this ship incapable of such a drastic turn. Mm. What they've got is understeer. Here's an example. The front end is not working. You're turning, 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 and you're just going straight. You want to go over here, but you're going to end up over here. So despite the order of 350, right now the bow is still only pointing at 327. Not nearly enough to miss the rock. And oh no, it's about to get worse. Uh-oh. That language barrier again. In these critical moments where every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays 340. The captain snaps back, 350 starboard, or we end up on the rocks. The third officer goes to assist the helmsman. Now, don't get confused by the orders from here. We're changing over to rudder instructions. The captain yells, starboard 10, starboard 20, and still, it's not enough. This hard is so intense. That means as hard as it'll go. Uh -huh. But at this point, even if they clear these rocks, they need to get the rest of the ship to swing around it. So the captain yells, midship, which centers the rudder. The bow is now less than 150 meters from the Jesus, holy port crap! Port 10. But the helmsman only gets to port 5 before another order is given two seconds later. Port 20. They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. But then, oh no. Oh no. One more time, the helmsman oh no. cocks up at the worst possible moment. The helmsman goes to starboard no! instead of port. Oh my god, no! The swing. Eight seconds later, he realizes the error and corrects, but it's too late. He has just turned a probable near miss into a... Simulations show that if this hadn't happened, the ship would have missed the rocks by up to 10 meter, or at least only flooded one compartment. Hold up! Me, as someone who has never known what happened with this ship, at least only flooded one compartment? That means it actually flooded more than one? Holy mo- Why would they put such a huge language barrier person in charge of the ship? As someone who relays messages, who needs to speak at least okay English or Italian. Oh boy. My fight or flight response is back. <laughs> this is why I don't feel safe on cruise ships, man. I've never been on one because I'm- I watched Titanic when I was five as a kid, and it freaking scarred me for life. Sure hit. All they can do now is hold on as the bow of the ship narrowly passes by the rocks. Hard to port. The second officer yells, we're gonna hit. <laughs> Collision. Ooh. <sighs> Oh no, man. <laughs> the pasta. <laughs> the company is super cheap. Like, why would you spend $570 million on the ship itself and cheap out on the personnel? Downtown. Is this Nord app type? Town. Okay. We make him silent. It's day 56 of playing Russian roulette. Seems I never win. Dude, so RIP, can I get some 07s in all for Somebody all the pasta I lost that night? I hear you're a man who's good at finding folks. I'm many things. I'm looking for this fella. I got to find him. It's breaking my little heart. I'll see what I can She's do. She's hot. I have contacts in thousands of servers in dozens of countries across the globe. And just like that. Rest in pastas. Are you done with work, Kanaka? <laughs> Sometimes when you follow a case, it Because the back. ship entertainment More would have made their spending into profits, not the personnel steering it. Oh, like the company, right? See, I, I have this problem with like a lot of gaming companies do this too, where they just make the game really pretty. They're really, really beautiful game. Presentation is 10 out of 10. And yet, there is no content. They skip out on the most important places. Safety. Hello. You're carrying lives of thousands of people on this ship. It's okay, I think, if the ship is a little bit like cheaper made, 
as long as I can get home safe, you know? I think that's the most important thing. I don't know about you. Yeah, I don't really want to drown at sea. But who can protect me from myself? When they said this job gets easier, it was just another lie. Forensics found this password spread all the way down the block. In a perfect world, we'd all use NordVPN. But I guess this isn't that kind of story. I think I actually purchased NordVPN and I never cancelled it. Man like me. And they never charged really me again. So <laughs> um, I took the steering wheel out. Maybe too. they're secretly charging me to this day, I'm not sure. Take me where I'm supposed to be. That's right, Toots. Your husband's dead. But I didn't use my own credit Mary. card. I used uh <laughs> use someone else's credit card at the time so i don't know if they ever canceled it mm -hmm. for a huge discount it's okay <laughs> hi tomes back in welcome back audio only oh emotes making it work okay i hope your internet stabilizes soon tomes I watch. I use VPN to watch a race, so nobody will know my shame. Um, sir, you have appeared as a guest on many Tuna's streams. Do you use a VPN there too? You lose a lot more on a crash. Like, I hate to freaking prattle about this point, but if anybody has watched or read that book uh, as a part of their middle school education, uh. The one about the Salem witch trials. And it was like about a dude named John who was like, I refuse to point my finger at any innocent person by naming them as a witch to free myself. And then I remember very vividly that there's one line and he was like, it's my reputation and it's all I have. As a kid, I didn't really understand because I'm like, uh, who cares? <laughs> who cares about your reputation? And now I'm like, as a freaking company, that is your lifeline. Like, that is what customers trust and depend on. The ship hits rocks on the port side. Yikes. A 53-meter gash opens up in the hull. Thousands of tons of water begin pouring in. A loud scraping and bang is heard by all passengers. Uh-oh. At the helm, there's panic. Rumblings in the dining room. Martin awkwardly pauses his act as he's helping his assistant into the box. Meanwhile, the lady inside out, is out, trapped and terrified. <gasps> There's confusion across the ship. Oh, All no. of the crew off shift come back on duty. All officers run to the bridge. Technical crews run down to the lower decks to assess damage. On connection with the rocks, they lose propulsion and slow to 8.3 knots. And they are now adrift. Close the watertight doors at stern. Enormous volumes of water are pouring in. So much so that within 29 seconds of collision, all six engines stop working through flight. No! 22 seconds later, a blackout happens. Holy! Lights that flip. is an insane amount of damage for, like, that crash. Wow. That is terrible. But wait, there's more. No! I'm so worried about the casualty count on this one. Don't spoil me. But goddamn. Tricks. The water pumps, too. Everything. The captain orders the helmsman hard starboard. This is the final position of the rudder before power to that, too, is lost. The Costa Concordia, now without power, is drifting starboard, plunged into absolute yikes, darkness. Yikes, yikes, yikes. A quick breakdown of the flooding. When the Concordia struck land, it tore open three watertight compartments. Okay. At first, compartment five, which filled very rapidly. Then six more slowly, four shortly after. Okay. Then seven, eight, and three. Oh, God. Modern ships are built to withstand two compartment breaches. These compartments especially, though, are a problem because they contain the engines and the electrics. Right. These main generators give power to the whole ship, from propulsion motors to rudder to hotel functions, pretty much everything. When okay. they went out, the ship was a functionless, sinking cage. Yikes, yikes! A few seconds later, the emergency batteries for internal lighting and communications kick on. When the lights come back on, Martin has vanished. He's ditched the stage. And it caused a huge panic in the theater, as passengers are trying to flee to their cabins and to muster stations. People already in their cabins come out and start putting on life vests. Staff rally and try to calm everyone down. Everything is fine. There's no need for vests. Please return to your cabins. 
The emergency generator starts. All of the watertight doors close except for door 12, no! which is jammed. Fuck! Why is this just one thing after another? This is making me anxious. The captain calls Pilot, the chief engineer, as the ship begins to list on the port side. There's water coming in? Yes, there's water. But where? The engine room. But a lot of water? Yes! <laughs> water. You can't go down. Let's go down the other side. No, just a splash. In a moment, we'll start the pumps. I'll let you know. In the theater, the whole magic box apparatus slides right off the stage and falls into the crowd, further increasing panic. On the bridge, an announcement is being prepared. They are going to lie to prevent a panic. No! Watch. We have a blackout. The deputy chief engineer enters the engine control room. He confirms to the bridge that at least compartments five, six, and seven are flooded. Okay. Announcements are made. This is the captain to inform you that due to an electrical fault, which is currently under control, we're currently in a blackout. I'll tell an electric fault um explain that huge boom sound that we heard and the sh shaking of the ship arm um, uh-huh yeah just electrical thank you for your attention coincidentally at the same time in the restaurant they're playing my heart will go on no <laughs> helping the situation the captain calls the cops. <laughs> this the cannot be getting worse. <laughs> he tells the crisis unit that they've hit a rock, that they're assessing damages, and that they are also in a blackout. The crisis office says to reverse the ship up onto shore. Well, That's what I was that? thinking. You don't have power to the rudder, let alone the engine. You know, hoist the sails. Anyway, around this time, the wind direction creates a starboard list, and no. the ship begins to turn anyway, drifting right back towards the shore. Which is a very good thing, because you want the ship to end up as close to shore as possible. A panicked passenger senses that something is off. This isn't like any electrical problem that she's ever seen. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A very smart passenger thinks something else is up. Plus, wow. There's a massive crashing noise, and now the ship is tilting. So right. She contacts her daughter in Italy. The she daughter is so smart. then calls the police, and the police call the harbor master. While that goes on, a conversation between Pilon and Ambrosio. The diesel is not starting. The captain asks the engine room, but where have we made contact, thinking that the incoming water can be reduced? Captain, here everything is lost. The electrical panel, everything. They're saying at this point that the ship is going down. The captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. Uh, actually, two compartments have been flooded. Oh but don't my worry, lord. the ship's stability isn't in danger. Oh um, my lord! Passengers begin going to muster stations on their own initiative. The cruise director says, We have a lot of people at muster stations that I do not want to fall overboard. Do we make an announcement to tell them to go to the lounges? Bozio says, I think that's best. The harbour master from Livorno calls the ship. The captain tells them that we, we just have a blackout. How long has this blackout been going on? About 20 minutes. Have you asked passengers to put on life vests? It, it's just a blackout. I, I gotta go. The harbor master is suspicious. He says to his... <laughs> okay, believe it or not, I have worked with people like this. And they lie about everything. Now, when your job is just a... What is it called? An office worker. It's it's not that serious, okay? It freaking sucks to work with someone like this who always lies and you have to clean up their mess, but nobody's dying. In this case, how does he not understand the gravitation of the gravity of the situation? Someone messed up and don't want to get fired? Um everybody, I mean, when the ship goes on shore, they're going to find out anyway. Isn't it always better if you fuck up? My personal motto is like, isn't it always better to just admit the fault yourself as opposed to letting other people figure it out after you've lied about it for 10 minutes? Oh, uh, okay. Anyways, let's continue. The superiors that he thinks something more is going on. He calls a patrol boat to the area and asks them to look at the ship. Another problem. The fan on the emergency diesel generator isn't working properly. Uh -oh. Pilon manually has to turn the thing on and off with a screwdriver so that it doesn't overheat and cause a fire. Oh my god. The captain is on the phone to the lower decks asking pointless questions like, is it still flooded? 
Yes. Yes, it is. The captain is essentially in denial of the situation. The harbour master calls. He's again. useless. Finally, he says, the ship is taking off water through an opening in the left side, and the ship is listening. He qualifies with, no one dead or injured. The harbour master asks if he needs help. Just a tug boat. When in reality, they need a full rescue. With three compartments flooded, the captain finally realizes that things are really bad and uh -huh, are not uh -huh. going to improve. The coast guard or soul on board. Iceberg ahead, but oh no, anyways, Raylia, cooler than the Arctic breeze, steered, oh no, anyways, destiny, they saved the ship akin to, oh no, anyways, a mechanic would- How long is this message, Jack? Ensuring every oh no, anyways, passenger got a seat in the lifeboat, oh no, anyways, like securing the last parking spot at oh no, anyways, a car show, hero, legend- H How long is <laughs> Okay, are we good? We, we good? We good? Oh no, anyways, caps uh, captivated, every soul on board truncated. Anyways. <laughs> oh no, anyways, it's literally that the model of this captain. The passengers, the cruise director's assistant says, uh, everything's under control. Please return to your cabins or hang about in the lounges, no problem. She said this despite knowing it was wrong and that it further endangered lives. Most passengers at this point though aren't listening to this nonsense. Of course, I wouldn't listen either. Out how to abandon ship. Bing, 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 bing. Local television has already picked up the story and they begin broadcasting live radio feed from the bridge. How are they this fast? Like how do news stations catch wind of stuff like this so quickly? Do they have spies? In like the police station, just feeding them stuff? Captain, the passengers are going on board the boats. Okay, let them go to shore. So then general emergency? Wait, nah. let me talk to Ferrarini. We risk the emergency generators that do not have cooling. It has cooling problems, 100 degrees. The cooling fan has stopped. Pilon calls the bridge and tells the safety officer they need to evacuate. The safety officer relays this to the captain, but after no response, he orders the engine room to evacuate on his own. The captain says, no, stay. We're leaving. Yeah, I was like, hello, off safety officer. This is your job. You need to step in. Let's go. Just testing the story to capabilities of AIs. Hi, Zach. Welcome in. They're like vultures. Because you have to get the news. You have to verify it might be correct. Or maybe news don't do that anymore. So they get news, and they have to dispatch people to go out there with the cameras and equipment. That takes time, right? How are they so fast? So what do we do? General emergency? Wait, wait, should I give the... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Another announcement is made. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. The situation is under control. Please remain calm. But at this time, proceed to your master station. They're located outside on deck four. The Livorno Coast Guard calls again. The captain declares distress. The Coast Guard officially calls for rescue operations. They contact Pietro Mille, the helicopter base commander, who then calls in every available pilot as he rushes down to the helicopter base. He launches down the emergency generator for the final time. You've the done your part, emergency generator. By this point, the lifeboats are already going. Luckily, the ship is very close to shore. Oh, perhaps too close to shore. Uh -oh, the uh -oh. ship forcefully runs aground, creating oh. an uneven center of gravity. Oh, and it no. begins heavily listing Starbucks. Oh, the no. captain issues a general emergency on board. The announcement to abandon ship is finally called and alarms ring out. And with that comes panic. And now that they're listing, with many of the lifeboats too awkwardly positioned to enter the water, there aren't enough readily available and they have to start going back and forth to the shore, picking people up and dropping them off. The patrol boats report to the Livorno Harbour Master that the ship has run aground and is listing heavily. So the harbour master asks the captain about it, and the captain says, no, 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 the ship is still floating. <laughs> the captain's like, um, my pasta is still quite level on my desk, so therefore we are not listing. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, in fact, we're trying to manoeuvre it onto the shore. They know he's lying. Hold on, I'm reversing it. Beep, 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 beep. The captain then says to bottom out the starboard anchor. Bottom so out. They the... drop out the hey, anchor, but let out too much chain, effectively rendering them useless. Oh my God! The these useless Mario people. Mario Pellegrini 
and tobacco shop owner Giovanni Rossi arrive at the harbour. They watch the scene unfold. As the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races to board one of the lifeboats returning to the ship and starts trying to find someone in charge. He gives up and starts helping passengers. Wait, this is the deputy mayor? Yo, this is actually so chad. Holy crap. What's his name? I need to, I need to write it down and, and laminate Scatino it. Scatino tells everyone to leave and take radios, but not before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Priorities. What? Dimitri Christidis and Sylvia Koronica leave with him. The maitre d' and Samor can both get out of there. By this point, approximately 300 people are still on the ship. Oh my Melee gosh. reaches the helicopter base. The first helicopter, a slow-moving Augusta Bell, was already rising from the tarmac for the hour-long flight south. Bozio is the last crew member left on the bridge, coordinating evacuation. He then leaves to help passengers board lifeboats. The bridge is now abandoned. And then, the ship's black box stops working. Apparently there were technical problems with it. <laughs> Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. What is this called? Murphy's? Is that Murphy's Law? Or is Murphy's Law about like the development of technology? Like everything that could go wrong is going wrong. <laughs> it's spelled pasta. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the captain always leaves last, all right? But the captain already booted out with his fancy suit. Man, fuck this captain. I want to know, because we haven't talked about it yet. Where is that Indonesian boy? <laughs> Did he make it out okay? Or is he okay? Is he okay? Hi, Pancake. That means from here, things are going to get a little foggy in detail. A wild okay, moving wait, what Augusta happened? Bell was already rising from the tarmac for the hour long. Anything that could south. be sus can be sus. Exactly. Ozio is the last crew member left on the bridge, coordinating evacuation. Chad. He then leaves to help passengers board lifeboats. Good job, bro. The bridge is now abandoned. And then the ship's black box stops mm. working. Apparently there were technical problems with it. Ugh. That means from here, things are gonna get a little foggy okay, in Okay, okay, okay. A while later, rescue helicopters arrive, but they're struggling to find the ship because they're expecting it to still be well above water. <laughs> Passengers are scaling down the <laughs> Pilots be like, um, Captain, I see no ship on this ocean. I think we're at the wrong location and the ship they're looking for is like half buried. <laughs> oh my God, what a gone show. What a gone show. If something can go wrong in different ways, it'll go wrong in the worst way. Absolutely. Port side by ladder as lifeboats return to pick them up. This is no, no joke. Oh my goodness. It was no, no joke anymore. Yo, fuck you, Dominica. A second helicopter, a faster model, sets off. The ship stops healing and comes to a final resting place. Oh, wow. Now the Coast Guard calls the captain because he's just learned that the captain has abandoned ship. The captain claims, uh, uh, no, actually, I slipped and I fell into one of the lifeboats. <laughs> kind of close. But now that I'm on the plane, <laughs> Darn I these well pastas. DeFelco tells the captain to get the fuck back on board. <laughs> And the captain kind of acts wait, what is that? And then wait, wait, wait. I may as well head back to shore. DeFelco tells the captain to get the fuck back on board. Vada bordo, Kazu. Get back on board for fuck's sake. <laughs> and the captain kind of acts confused and then effectively refuses. So the captain makes it to shore. From here, we only have mainstream news reports to rely on, so it's not going to be super accurate. Mm, but they okay. say that Giglio's police chief then finds 110 survivors on the rocks at Point Gabianara. And among them is the captain. Oh my it's God. It's not known whether the captain helped anyone while he was there. And in fact, the police chief claimed that he just sat on the rocks and watched other people do the rescuing. Oh no! A while later, a rescue boat picks up the captain and takes him to the harbor. He speaks to the police. He then finds the ship's onboard chaplain, Father Rafael Molina, and cry to him for about 15 minutes. <laughs> What's then a he chaplain? Goes to the Harbor Master's office to receive probably the biggest dressing down of his entire life. Port authorities ask the taxi driver to take the captain back to his hotel. The captain takes the 30 second cab ride to the Bahamas Hotel. According to the cabbie, he was beaten like a dog. He was cold and afraid. 
He only asked me where he could buy a pair of fresh socks. <laughs> I'm surprised he's not looking for a pair of new underwear. I'm surprised he didn't soil himself amongst all of that because it's his responsibility and he fucked up big time. Like a priest? And he helps you if you're in distress. I see. And he cried to him for about 15 minutes, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, shipping. This is why I never go on cruise ships. Fresh socks? Why? Because his feet are stinky. But then he perked right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. Oh, my God. The captain God. is usually the last to abandon ship. What happened, Captain? We were the last to leave the ship. <laughs> All they said, they rescue a search for the ship. On Sunday morning, a South Korean couple is found in their cabin, safe but shivering. They had slipped through the crash and huh? woke up unable to exit their cabin. The last How did you sleep, sleep through all that? <laughs> was found with a broken leg. He was the cabin service director. Ouch. In the end, 32 people died. Oh. The final body wasn't discovered until nearly three years later. A crew member, Russell Rebello, and it's believed that he died a hero helping passengers off the ship. No. The Costa Concordia was the largest cruise ship disaster since the Titanic. Oh, awful. And then there's the ship. This is what RIP's happens in to a for the 33 lost souls thousand man. ton cruise liner when it's left half rolled over in the ocean. And uh oh wait, that's the wrong song. Uh My heart. Oh, it's gone. How did that song go again? It's just the halfway point. What most people know is that the Costa Concordia had crashed, many dead, and then the captain abandoned ship like a coward. Yeah. But there's a whole veritable freaking coward to untangle. Let's dive in. Oh my god, what is happening in this clip? Um what is this clip? I'm not even Italian, but this hurts me. They're there for a reason. Regulations are written in blood. Yeah, and I don't understand why people don't understand that. Like, process <laughs> safety regulations and handrails are there because someone fucked up once before. It's not just there to annoy you and make your work a little bit tougher for five minutes. But there's a whole veritable spaghetti of details to untangle. Let's dive in. Ugh. There they are. The deets. Oh my god, you you monster. Had a review. <laughs> Not safe for work. Pretty sucks. That was pretty sucks. Blue box time. The Costa Concordia was more than just a floating resort. There's a mall. A casino. Cha ching, cha ching. This oh, iron money. chest was full of safes and cash registers oh. and expensive fittings. And there were plenty of gamers prepared to sneak by authorities and try their luck in the hot zone. Within days, police divers reported that valuable items, once seen lying around the ship, were now missing. What sucks? High end liquor, <laughs> expensive furniture, dining sets, cash from the casino, cash registers, jewelry and display cabinets, oh, safes, no. Japanese woodblock prints by famous 18th century artists, what does it do? as well as the iconic bell, which hung from the bridge of the ship. It was never found. <laughs> Who steals a big fuck off <laughs> bell? Even the server admins were getting involved. Four divers who were part of the company contracted to refloat the Concordia were spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the ship. A patrol boat That's was so embarrassing. Spotted, and the men were caught inside the fancy suites with rucksacks full of stolen goods. The four men are charged. That with boat stole. And the rucksacks full of stolen Look goods. Sir. The four men. That boat stole. <laughs> He probably stuffs them down his pants. Men are charged with stealing and thieving and pinching 
Later on, stolen as well as legitimate items found their way to Amazon and eBay. What? Just from the casino, postcards, and cabin access cards became highly sought after souvenirs. It even has a watermark. That's some Australian guy good to me. That's for the fucked ship up, itself, bro. Advertising it as buyer to collect. That's fucked yeah, up. Uh, that's fucked up. Uh, this is this is a this is a disaster. And now people out here collecting these cards as if they're collecting Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Nah, bro. What is wrong with people? Well, there were plenty of bidders. eBay pulled the plug. I've never heard of this. Yeah. The relationship. I know you want to see Scatino go to jail, and we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. First, Boo. We have to talk about someone else. Tomato, tomato, Don tomato. Nika, some That was a close one. There was speculation that she was on the bridge that evening because she was the captain's mistress. Intense media speculation reports that her presence distracted the captain. They both denied their love for years and maintained that they were just friends. Although she did later admit to the media that she found him handsome. <laughs> Does she have eyes? Does she need glasses? Um, man, looks aside, just based on his actions, this man is the epitome of small pee, -pee energy. <laughs> girl, 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 girl. I have no words for you. Sis, up your standards. Hi, Ali. Hello. Yeah, yeah, just friends, right? Just friends. Mm. And how could you not? You so fucking precious when you smile. But she says there was no romantic link between them. Some people would like to believe. They want to know I have something with him. It's more interesting. It's like, you know, some spicy, spicy in the story. Miss oh. also loved the spotlight, however. Uh, right. Everyone and took several interviews. But as the pressure mounted upon her, oh. she began making ominous threats to Scatino, oh. saying he must confess, and that you have but one week. Damn, he did her dirty with this photo. She deserves to it. come clean. But things from here get weird. Spicy. Sir Morton is a bit of a wild card. <laughs> In a subsequent interview, she claimed a helicopter came to the ship well before the other rescue craft to take Ugh, I can't look at them. I can't look at them. This is some great editing. This is so entertaining. Also, sis, fix your eyebrows. Take away a package. Huh? huh? And what was that package? Drugs, apparently. Oh. No way. So rumors began that the ship was running narcotics Powdered sugar? for the mafia. And not without cause. A oh. number of cruise ships, even recently, have been caught trafficking drugs. Oh. As a sign, Scatino was tested for drugs immediately after the crash. He tested negative for drugs in his system, but trace amounts of cocaine were found in a hair sample. Except no! Smoother and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia was searched and no drugs were reportedly ever found. Don't How they do just melt it? in water, oh, right. though? A helicopter. Sir Morton commented on it again the next day and said, actually, that helicopter was just for the captain as a means of evacuation from the ship. Okay, wait. So she expected to get some sort of first-class rescue while everyone else was still stuck on the ship? Yeah, wait, she's a lover. Oh, right. Sex with the captain. Divers were quick to head to the captain's cabin where they found Miss Morton's lingerie <gasps> and other articles of clothing as well as a makeup bag. <gasps> the jig was up. But yeah! they continued. Gross! Wait, powdered sugar doesn't melt in water? Really? Aren't they like chemical crystals though? <laughs> Fitz, yeah, that emote is perfect. <laughs> Ew. Bro. Oh man. God damn. Imagine, imagine you trained for hours and obtained a license and like, you know, enlisted with the police as like a coastal guard and searching for people lost at sea. And then one day you come into work and they're like, John, we need you to go out there and find traces and evidence of their cheating scandal. Best if we can get some of her underwear in his room. <laughs> Ew. You deny Spicy. It. Sir Morton mostly faded from international attention until she was told to appear before the court to present witness testimony.
The judge pressed her to be truthful about their relationship, or she would be held in contempt. Either tell me the truth or shut up. So finally, <laughs> she admitted. <laughs> yes, I had a sentimental relationship with the Sentimental? Captain. Stop. But now, stop asking about my private life. She was indeed the captain's lover. What is up, Trouble Alert Nation? She was already married, right? So... Wait, 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 no, the captain was married. Okay, in an earlier photo somewhere here, I thought she had a... Oh, here. Wait, well, what time am I at? 3, 30, 34. Okay, we'll come back. Look, look, look. Where did that photo go? I just saw it. She had a ring on her uh, on her ring finger here, on her left hand. That was a close one. But first, we have to talk about someone else. Dominica Samort. Look at her hand. There was speculation... No! That's her left hand ring finger. I thought she was married. Anyways. Another confusing interview after leaving court. I want to say that today is the second time I die because the first time I die in the night of the crush with my psychological brain and uh, what? problems. And today I die the second time because of course people <laughs> What? find out something that I try to hide. Subsequent to the trial, she used her What is she saying, Tad? The word vomit. I, heard, I learned this phrase yesterday. What is it called? Word salad, no dressing. Goddamn, shut up. It's like, at the end of the day, what happened is what happened. It is what it is, you know? What happened transpired and continues to transpire to this day. Uh, and unfortunately, I, I was caught in it. What is she saying? What? Is, what? I think you tell me. <laughs> ...in Moldova to become a political activist, often appearing on television and radio and in articles covering protests, accompanied by pictures of her being arrested by police. She's so embarrassing. Oh, jeez. It was some stuff about victims of violence, women's rights, Girl power. yada yada yada. And interestingly, part of a push Girl to block power. the sale of shares of Moldova's train network to Russia. Sure, it's sure. Other than that, I don't really know what she's been up to. Let me just check on her ins. No oh, God. Oh again. no! Who let her in? What the frick? She didn't go in to Several jail for any of that? quickly lodged against Costa Crochier, and their parent company, Carnival Cruises, immediately saw a share drop of 23%. Deserved? Don't beat. Passengers sought compensation for their damaged mental health, lost belongings, and loved ones. Either they allowed him to divert from his course, or they didn't know where their billion dollar ship was. Within a few days, facing financial and media pressure, the CEO attempted to join the bandwagon against the captain and the crew. That was not the ordinary route that the ship was uh, taking. Okay, but can you explain why you hired someone who was a security guard as head of the ship? And can you also explain why you hired someone who didn't speak English or Italian as the person who was relaying the message at the bridge? Thank you very much. Sublime, hello! We're watching Internet Historian. I'm, and, and was not only taking by the time the, the ship Today, was... Junior. Claiming that the ship was not <laughs> approved to deviate from the route. But that wasn't true. Approval isn't required if the ship is deviating by less than 15 miles, or that it was against company rules. Also untrue, because investigators found that they didn't have any rules about deviating route, and they tacitly encouraged sail by salutes. Now, in response to the civil suits, Costa Crochier offered passengers 11,000 euros each as compensation. That's kind of small. Yeah, I was going to say, euros, that's nothing. About $14,000 is the minimum compensation under international law when a ship is abandoned. This was to reimburse them for their tickets, as well as any costs they accrued in yeah, that's, that's not enough. travel home early. 
That is and not enough. That was supposed to release them from everything and anything that has to do with this accident. I cannot ask for more than this. A lot of passengers, understandably, were not too happy with this deal and they refused to take the money. We think the offer is an insult. For what these poor passengers went through, mm, we mm. think that the compensation being offered is not commensurate. Mm. Especially <laughs> if you lost somebody on that ship. Hey, Jesse. Compensation no. being offered is not commensurate. <laughs> Later, Costa Crochier would lodge a plea deal with the Tuscany court to pay a <laughs> 1 million euro fine to avoid a criminal trial. The judge agrees. Costa oh. Crochier is now Damn. off the hook for all criminal liability for the whole thing. They've washed their hands of the incident and flash the residual droplets of responsibility onto the faces of six staff members. Passengers and relatives of the dead are livid that the company has been able to avoid criminal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Offered is not commensurate. Civil suits against the company continue. By the way, the residents of the island of Giglio also banded together and sought damages. They didn't get much. <laughs> Eventually, passengers who refused the initial compensation of 11,000 joined civil parties against Scatino in his trial in 2015. Not I mean, like, what is he going to do? He's just one captain. Like, how much can he compensate? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 1,000 euros each. Other cases, especially those involving lost relatives, are settled for undisclosed amounts. I feel so bad for people that lost, like, relatives on that ship. That sucks. Scams? New York attorney Peter Rene traveled to Budapest to represent six real survivors of the disaster. Okay. Uh, Rene and Rene, we personally work on every case. And we'll work harder than anyone to get you the most money possible in the oh shortest amount. Oh my god, time. this is such and a cringe job, ad. A seventh case cropped up via mail. email. Hey, Asmongol. An elderly woman, Alona, said, Help me, Mr. Ronai, for I have lost my daughter, Eva, and my five-year-old granddaughter, Roxana. So Mr. Renai agreed to speak with her. However, there were some inconsistencies in her story. Neither Eva nor Roxana were on the passenger list. Oh, oh she's but she's Costa a scammer. Is known for having stowaways. Gotcha, bitch. Still, Mr. Renai <laughs> was suspicious. They wouldn't cheaty old Petey, would they? Renai inquired further about why she was on board, especially without a ticket. Elona said, "Well, I don't know, but you should ask her boyfriend." Who? Zolt Horvath. He'll know all the details. Who? I'm up all night. I'm going crazy, he said. But Mr. Renai was still suspicious. Because then she asked, How much money do you think this is worth? Oh my god! Uh, this is a huge red flag, Petey. Never once have I experienced a situation where someone loses a relative and all they talk about is money. Every family just wants to know what happened, how did it happen? Yeah, and especially if she lost her daughter and her five-year-old granddaughter. And all she asks is, how much money can I get out of it? Either it's a scam or she's a really, really terrible grandma. In 20 years of doing this, you've never had anyone ask about money. Why now? Huge red flag. So Mr. Renai hired an investigator and sent photos around of the missing girl. The next day, the phone rang. Oh, hoi, hoi. It was the boyfriend again. Ah, uh, look. There's been a bit of a misunderstanding, and the child isn't missing at all. What? Uh -huh. And then he claimed he was confused because he had done too many drugs the night before. Huh? Oh. Okay, can I speak to the daughter then? At first, he was refused. So Renai said that he'd have to file a missing persons report to the police if he couldn't. The boyfriend relented. That night, Renai met with Zolt and brought the police with him. He speaks to the granddaughter and asks her if she's seen Mum. Yeah, I saw her today. What? Oh, really? Yeah, we went to the park today and we went on the swings. Oh, so no, the jig was up. Cute. So the mum walks into the room sheepishly. It's a miracle. And the story changed again. Okay, I'm not dead, but I did injure me leg when I jumped from the ship. And then I immediately flew back to Budapest. Although, don't worry about checking my leg because there are no visible marks or injuries. Uh, <laughs> old Petey, I'm beginning to. Do we believe her, Tata? Do we think she's telling the truth? Honestly, those heels are pretty sick, and I feel like she might be real, you know? You know, I've seen I've seen some really strong, strong ankles uh, that are broken but still wearing like 10-inch platformers. Yeah, yeah. Hi Galvaton! Hello, hello! 
seems watertight, just like the ship, right? So, hey, yo. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, just like the boat. To think they weren't even on the boat. Also, it turns out this lady isn't her mom, it's just a neighbor. Oh. Eventually, Renee managed to make the pair confess. And then they said, hey, we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't taken any money. And in the end, it looks like there'll be no criminal punishment for the scam. Because Hungary, a former communist country, has no laws against insurance fraud on the books. What? The law firm that never sleeps, call 1-800-665. They're actually very good lawyers and have won awards. I'm just having fun. Please no sue. Okay, the way internet historians set up this, this ad, I thought the joke was going to be on the lawyer. But it turns out he's actually a pretty stand-up oh, guy. Oh, that's a bad idea. Oh, that's a very bad idea. Oof. 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 Yikes. Very valid body. Would you teach me some Italian? Oh, of course. <laughs> Get back on board for fuck's sake. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Gregorio de Felder, uh -huh. the naval officer who shouted at Scatino to Vada a bordo caso, became Wait. a bit of a national hero overnight in Italy. Of course. He, like the rest of the world, expected Scatino to go down with the ship. The captain never abandons the ship! And when the captain chickened out, De Falco was there to admonish him. And when he stopped answering the radio, he called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. I really will hurt... Wait, what? But I will really hurt you. I will cause you a boatload of trouble. Yes, a proper emergency and he's still making puns. <laughs> when the captain first reported just a blackout, De Falco didn't believe the story and immediately began preparing a rescue effort which likely saved several lives. Mm. His actions good were job, applauded by most Italians who were tired of their public servants being corrupt and avoiding responsibility. Accordingly, shirts sporting Vada a bordo caso <laughs> were being printed by the end of the week. <laughs> it became a meme. Others setting it as their phone's ringtone. But then, in September 2014, without warning, De Falco was transferred to an admin role in the Why? Coast Guard. Why? After what I said, he'd been demoted. De Falco said that he had been passed up for promotion that he had also not been told which admin office he was even being transferred to, and that it all effectively cancelled 10 years of his career. No! De Falco was tres furioso, and there was public speculation that it was owing to bad blood between himself and Admiral Delana, his oh, former boss. politics! His status among the public overshadowed his superior in many ways. On the other hand, his boss said, Ah, uh, no, it's part of a normal career progression for naval officers and that he must show more maturity and professionalism to advance his career. Now, it's hard Sounds to like... know what's true in office politics. <laughs> that, what do we think? Smells like bullshit. Goddamn office politics. So let's leave that alone. Mm -hmm. And anyway, in 2018, De Falco said buenas noches, you later, to the Italian Navy to become a politician. In March oh. that year, he was elected to the Italian Senate, serving as a member for Livorno. Yo. He still serves there today. I'm the company now. Let's go. Happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of memes he puts in these transitions. <laughs> the day after the disaster, Scatino was taken into custody by police and underwent questioning. Mm. However, it was clear that this would not be a straightforward investigation. So the judge released him under house arrest at his home in Sorrento, a town in Napoli. By July of that year, the house arrest was relaxed and he was allowed within this general area. While under house arrest, he wrote a book with this journalist from Rai magazine. I have no idea what it says. I never understand the purpose of house arrests because it's not like I go outside anyways. So even if I get placed on house arrest, just just normal day things, you know, just life as normal. Especially if you're quote unquote under house arrest, but you can leave within a vicinity of five miles. Like, uh, so he just he could just go anywhere. OK, because I don't speak Italian, but God damn it. He must have some kind of charisma going on because there's been a lot of speculation in the press that he had an affair with her as well. <gasps> he can't keep getting away with this, bro. His poor wife. 
Did, did they get a divorce? Did they get a divorce? I don't need to leave my house to watch Aurelia on Twitch. Exactly. Or, or on YouTube. Not content with abandoning his ship, this dude is determined to abandon his wife as well. <laughs> so, Scatino and five others are facing criminal charges. Right. Straight away, everyone lodges a plea bargain with the court. And all of those plea bargains are accepted, except for Scatino's. And the condition of everyone's reduced sentences are that they must provide witness testimony against Scatino. Oh, they're pitting each them against me. each other. Ciro, Jacob, and Sylvia were all given suspended sentences. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community service or house arrest. Not a bad deal. A good deal. Good deal. And that meant that Scatino was now all on his own. Mm. Ciro, the first officer, was the first to give his testimony. But honestly, if five people at the board and they, what did, what did they get? Like one to, I think, two and a half years of either jail time or community service or house arrest. That is not bad at all for what happened. Of 33 people dead, that is not bad at all. Because, I mean, if, if, if the earlier uh, edits of this video is to be believed, it was a group effort to crash that ship. <laughs> But only one person's getting graded. On the witness stand, he claimed that Scatino was distracted by his mistress and other guests Beautiful. on the bridge. Oh my God. That there was confusion over who was in command. Then it was... Uh, wait, wait, what did that say? Why is his mistress on the ship anyways, or on the bridge? Given the way he positioned, I assumed he had taken a man, and I thought I was no longer in charge. Then, since the captain was distracted and we were getting closer, I gave orders to the helmsman. VDR suggests this is not true. Okay. Over who was in command. Then it was Jacob's turn. And he said, Lamau XD, because he what? didn't actually bother with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. It took authorities 12 months to eventually track him down on the <laughs> outskirts of Jakarta. And when they said, Oi, we still want that witness testimony. He just scalped again. And he hasn't been found since. No! After that... <laughs> what? He just bugged it. God damn. Huh? I mean, I feel like that... Mm. Yeah, he won the hide and seek. Okay. Mm -hmm. He hauled ass. <laughs> I feel like I understand... I feel like if I was a young boy from Indonesia getting involved in this, what, like, billion-dollar suitcase, and I didn't really speak most of the language. Wait, how did he leave the country? I thought these people would be placed under uh, a ban on travel. How did he even get out of the country? Ferrarini gave on a his boat? testimony. Then so, uh, look, we don't have time to relitigate the whole trial. So let's just go straight to the verdict. Guilty! Guilty, 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 guilty. Scatino was found guilty of multiple manslaughter, causing a shipwreck, abandoning ship, and lying to authorities. He is sentenced abandoning to ship is a crime? years and one month in prison. That's it? That's so low. But wait, there's still the appeals. Oh. The appeals trial begins. And the verdict on the appeal? No. Surprise! Rejected! Yeah! So Scatino's lawyers appealed again. And the verdict on the final appeal? No! Scatino made multiple attempts to secure a plea deal, but was denied by the prosecution each time. The prosecution called for Scatino to be sentenced to 26 years in prison, calling the incident a titanic affair. Oh, okay, I see what you did there. Scatino was not present. His lawyer stated that he was waiting outside of the jail for the ruling, so that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. And with that, five years and four months after the disaster, he was finally in a cell. Jesus. That took a long time. <laughs> Refloating? What? We're, we're... The salvage operation. No, they're going to fix enormous. it. It took over two years and cost an estimated 1.2 billion dollars. Beginning in early 2012, they first spent two months pumping fuel from the ship's tanks. At the same time, they had to pump seawater in so that the balance wasn't affected and the ship didn't slide around. In early 2013, a platform was built under the ship to prevent it from falling further. Okay. Sponsons were then attached to the sides of the ship and cables attached to the underwater platform. 
The sponsons were then dragged underwater and opened up to allow the ocean to fill them. The ship could then roll over properly. Okay. By late 2013, the ship was upright once more. Holy moly, that's crazy. The sponsons were then attached to the side of the ship to help keep it balanced. It now rested partially above water and crews could walk around safely. By July 2014, the water was removed from the sponsons and compressed air was pumped in to lift the ship. Why? And she was ready to cruise again. Well, why? They spend more dollars on the repair of this ship than just building a new ship. Can't they just salvage what parts they can from it and build a new ship? I feel like that would be cheaper. In Genoa. It was a four-day towing journey to the docks where a two-year process of dismantling and recycling would begin. That same weekend of the towing, Scatino was busy. He was the guest of honor at a white party on an island in the- Fuck you! Fuck you! What the frick? Bro, this guy sucks! This guy sucks! What did that lady say about him? He was handsome, bruh. He an ugly ass hey, motherfucker. He appeared on the front page of a local newspaper, Ugh. flanked by two of Italy's most eligible bachelorettes. Ugh. How, how does this guy anyway, keep getting women and I can't? So these are the <laughs> things that I remember from the Costa Concordia. Environmental issue? Oh, I see, I see. That's okay. sweet maiden of the sea. And as for you, little fella. Um, Irma? Well, it's time to return you from whence you came. Uh...